So I made a video a few months back about how the Chicago Bulls, although disappointing as a franchise in a number of regards, and of course we as fans grow impatient from their lack of success of this team, but when you take a step back and assess how they compare and stack up against the rest of the franchises in the league and their team's history, the Bulls actually fare pretty well. And in that video, I discussed how the Bulls have really been given this label as a joke of the NBA, when in reality, that's not very accurate when you look at their success, even outside of the MJ era. And I want to discuss that in this video and some surprising numbers about the Bulls franchise history and how they actually compare against some of the other historic franchises that you may not have previously been aware of. So what's going on, everyone? You're listening to Bulls Central here. Hope you're all doing well. Guys, in my last video, I discussed the real problem with the Chicago Bulls lying with the ownership and their incredibly frugal approach in running the franchise over these past few decades. You could even argue that was the case in the 90s, but as much as we like to blame the ownership, the front office, the coaching staff, and even the players, which let's not kid ourselves, it's not like the Bulls history has been exactly stellar, but compared to some of the other incredibly disappointing franchises across the NBA, and with the information that I'm about to share with you, you might think, okay, the Bulls maybe aren't really that bad compared to some of these other franchises around the league. So, of course, we all know the Bulls have six championships to its name, all of which came in the 1990s in the dynasty that featured the likes of Michael Jordan, Scottie Pippen, Dennis Rodman, Horace Grant, BJ Armstrong, Ron Harper, Tony Kukoc, among others. Now, those six titles are still third most all-time among all franchises in the NBA. And mind you, they are the only franchise in NBA history that has won the title every single time they have gone to the finals with at least two or more titles. And of course, until this past season when the Lakers won their sixth title since 2000, the Bulls had the most NBA championships than any other franchise in the last 30 years. Now, I know you guys are probably thinking, well, uh, yeah, that isn't that impressive because all of this happened in a short span of time with the greatest team ever assembled and with the greatest player to ever play the game. You can't just single out the great performances of that decade and apply it to their overall franchise's success. Well, yes, that's fair, but what might surprise you, and some of the you know diehard Bulls fans I'm sure already know this, but the Bulls are also 11th all-time in terms of playoff appearances across the NBA, and more specifically, after the MJ era, despite some major struggles from the Bulls shortly thereafter, the dynasty was broken up, but from 2005 to 2017, the Bulls only missed the playoffs twice in that 12-year span, finishing with a record at or above 500 in every single season, with the exception of one, which was the 2007-2008 season where they fired Scott Skiles. And then, of course, the Bulls, it ended up working out for them in the sense that they were then bound to the lottery, which ultimately landed them the number one pick, which they used to choose Derrick Rose in the 2008 NBA draft. Now, to put that into perspective, no other team other than the San Antonio Spurs can claim that kind of feat of making the playoffs that consistently during that time period. Not the Warriors, the Celtics, Lakers, Sixers, any of the other major teams known for their success as a franchise can make that claim. And yes, I know, well, great, they've been able to make the playoffs a fair amount of times during their franchise history, but so what? They were more often than not eliminated in the first or second round. In fact, they've only been able to make it to the conference finals once since winning the title uh, in 1998, and that was the Eastern Conference Finals, where they went there in 2011, the year before Derrick Rose suffered his ACL injury. But if you compare even that time period for teams like the Sacramento Kings, who haven't been to the playoffs once since 2006, the Minnesota Timberwolves, they've been to the playoffs once since then, the New York Knicks three times in that span, the Detroit Pistons four times, the Charlotte Hornets three times, and the Phoenix Suns three times. What also might surprise you is that the Bulls' all-time winning percentage of 50.9% is 12th all-time among all NBA franchises. Yes, even through all the down years that the Bulls had, they've still been able to maintain a winning record for their franchise history, ahead of teams like the Golden State Warriors, the Dallas Mavericks, Denver Nuggets, New York Knicks, Detroit Pistons, among many others. Now, we're not here to praise regular season records because, of course, at the end of the day, what matters most is winning an NBA title. But really, the point here is more so that, yes, the Bulls have from time to time been a bit of a joke. In fact, no, they have been a joke, not even just a little bit. But how can the Bulls be the joke of the NBA relative to some of these other franchises who have been an absolute embarrassment for decades with losing season after losing season, playoff droughts for 10 plus years? The Golden State Warriors, as an example, who have really become synonymous with success recently, maybe not in the last two seasons, but a dynasty team, right? This franchise went from 1977 to 2012, making the playoffs a total of six times and having never gotten past 
the second round in that entire time period. In that 35 year span, this franchise went to the playoffs six times with a losing record in 26 of those 35 seasons. The New York Knicks, the biggest market in franchise in the NBA has gone to the playoffs all but four times since 2001. Well, five times, including this year, and just one playoff series win in that 20 year span. And it looks like it's going to remain at one since they're now down to the Atlanta Hawks three to one in this current series. The Clippers, the Clippers, as I'm sure most of you uh, have already known this, but they have actually never gone beyond the second round in their franchise's history. More recently, the Clippers have been known as a more successful team with the star-studded talent that they've been able to bring in. But get this, you thought the Warriors were bad for the drought that they had. The Clippers from 1977 to 2011 went to the playoffs all but four times, only making it to the second round in one of those. One playoff series win in a 34-year time span. Yeah. And guys, the LA Lakers, the most well-known and winningest franchise in league history, even most recently from 2013 to 2019, missed the playoffs and went eight years without winning a single playoff series until the bubble this past season, which of course they ended up winning the title. Now guys, all of this is really to show that, you know, there have been teams, you know, that we have been in far off worse situations than the Bulls. Uh, yes, the Bulls missing the playoffs yet again marks the fourth season in a row, but the Bulls as a franchise haven't even come close to some of the droughts and embarrassing seasons other teams that have had for much longer periods of time. So I don't think it's fair or accurate for the national media or even some Bulls fans for that matter to just chalk the Bulls up to the biggest joke in the NBA, especially when they're never going to be able to replicate what the Bulls of the 90s did under Michael Jordan. And I feel like more often than not, the Bulls are always going to be compared to that historic run that they had in the 90s, whereas you would never see that from other organizations. The Bulls had the second most wins in a single season and uh, actually won a title in that season, unlike the 73-9 Warriors. The Bulls also have the fourth most wins in a single season in NBA history. So of all the seasons in league history, the Bulls hold the second and fourth in terms of top wins in a season. The Bulls also have the second most consecutive home games made in a season at 37 straight wins, right behind the San Antonio Spurs at 39. And guys, the Bulls are also top 10 in the league in playoff series wins and top 10 in playoff wins uh, as a whole across the entire league, which is important because I feel most fans, the media, analysts generally assume that a team's success is a championship or bust. But the fact of the matter is it is incredibly hard to win a championship in the NBA. You're talking about one team winning it all among 30 getting lucky with injuries and hoping that you know, a star doesn't get a major serious injury like the Bulls have experienced in recent years, talent clicking both on and off the court, the fit of the team, the chemistry of the team, everything has to work. Even some of the most talented teams fall short of the title when the team doesn't fit well together. So the fact that the Bulls have had decent success in terms of playoff wins and playoff series wins, that, that should be noted. And that is a measure of a franchise's success in addition to titles, which again, the Bulls have the third most titles in league history, tied with the Warriors behind the Lakers and the Celtics. Yes, a lot of that can be attributed to the 90s Bulls years, including those playoff wins and playoff series wins that put them into the top 10 in the league, but the Bulls also had considerable success in the years at least leading up to this most recent rebuild. So whenever the media analysts start talking about the failures of the Bulls and that they're a joke of a franchise, well, yes, they have had their struggles. Yes, they've made a lot of poor decisions, but do your research, look at the history, and you realize that so have a lot of other organizations throughout league history, most considerably worse than what the Bulls have been able to produce overall. Anyway, let me know what you guys think. Do you think that the way that the Bulls and the franchise is treated as a whole is unfair? Uh, were there any facts that were surprising to you? Let me know in the comments. And as always, guys, be sure to subscribe if you're a Bulls fan as I do post daily Bulls content. Thanks again for tuning in, guys, and I will catch you in the next one.